Bienvenidos. Hola, soy la doctora Connie Martínez, fundadora y directora de Cinema Culturas. Cinema Culturas se honra en presentar las historias finalistas y ganadoras de nuestra competencia estudiantil Sigue Soñando en Tiempos Difíciles. Queremos agradecer a nuestros colaboradores, la Oficina de Educación del Condado de Riverside y al Distrito Escolar Unificado de Riverside. A nuestros estudiantes queremos decirles gracias por su valentía de compartir sus historias con todos nosotros, con todo el mundo. Y queremos recordar que sigan escribiendo sus historias, sigan grabando sus historias y que no se les olvide que la educación abre las puertas a un sinnúmero de posibilidades. Muchísimas gracias y nos vemos pronto. Hasta luego. Hi, I'm Patricia Lack Dawson, and I'm a trustee on the Riverside Unified School District Board of Education. RUSD is honored to be co-hosting with the Riverside County Office of Education, Cinema Culturas' Storytelling and Film K-12 Student Competition. Keep on dreaming in challenging times. And we are excited to have the winning and finalist stories showcased at Cinema Culturas' 2020 Film Festival. We'd like to thank Cinema Culturas for creating a learning space that promotes high academic standards and provides a true student global experience. RUSD students, students from the city of Riverside, and six other local Southern California cities are able to connect and share their stories with students from around the world, promoting diversity and inclusion. At RUSD, we seek to inspire and empower students to reach their highest potential, and the arts are an incredible vehicle to do this. The arts have such power to inspire, connect, and create a shared community, and we are so grateful for this opportunity to work with Cinema Culturists to showcase our students' talents, creativity, and their experiences. We are proud of our students whose stories reflect our district's diverse and rich cultures. Our partnership with Cinema Culturas is also a wonderful way to highlight Riverside's Latino communities and give students the opportunity to tell their stories in Spanish. We invite you to see these wonderful stories in the upcoming showcase, November the 20th through November the 30th.
Ліф тебе на добре серце. Жить свои добрые сердца. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Homeschool Hot Dog. Today, I will tell you the amazing and inspiring story of how I turned from homeschool hot dog into Elon Mustard. It all began one boring spring 2020 day as I was stuck at home again during COVID-19. I did all the, my school work that morning and did a million hot dog lunches across the room that afternoon. It was so fun, it got me wishing I could launch myself farther, like across my neighborhood, or across Riverside, or across America, or even better, to space! Yes, space. That is brilliant, just like me. If Elon Musk can launch his rocket, why can't a little old hot dog do it too? I knew I would make this dream come true. I built my rocket from a delicious hot dog bun. Yum! And used ketchup as fuel. Three, two, one. Uh. Sky. I made it up to outer space. It was incredible. I. It was everything I dreamed outer space could be. But soon enough, it was getting. Lo I was getting lonely up there. I was missing my family, so I knew it was time to blast back to Earth. I went to f fire up my rocket ship bun, but oh no! I was out of fuel. I had used all, up all my ketchup fuel on the blast up to space. How would I get home without fuel? This was horrible. I didn't want to be stuck in space forever, but I knew I couldn't give up. Hmm. Oh, I saw the space station radio. I loaded, I floated over there. I got on that walkie talkie and called home. Family? Yes, help. I'm stuck in space and I need more fuel to get home. They said they would get the whole city of Riverside to help right away. Two days later, Amazon Prime rang my space station doorbell. Ding dong! A thing of mustard was on my doorstep. Yes! The exact fuel I need to blast back to Earth! I loaded that mustard into my fuel tank. Three, two, one! Blast off again! Yeet! Ah, there's no place like home. That mustard worked like a charm and got me to home. Sweet quarantine home. I was so thankful for my family and all of Riverside for Amazon priming that mustard. I couldn't have done it without all that teamwork. And Riverside was so motivated by my space journey. The city said that we declare that people will no longer eat hot dogs. From now on, people will only eat hamburgers. And the homeschool hot dog will forever be known as Elon Mustard. I feel sad and mad because black people do not get treated equally. Like when George Floyd said, I can't breathe, the cop continues to kneel on his neck. And if the roles were reversed, everyone, white, black, Mexican, 
Eve in Asia would have spoken up and stopped the senseless killing of another human being. Silence is violence. When white people talk to the cops, the cops tend to listen. Unlike if a black person tried to stop him, he would have got shot or even killed. This makes me mad. Nobody says stop. Why? 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 We need to end racism. Why can't we be treated equally? Why can't you see beyond skin color? When you look at me, what do you see? Do you only see the color of my skin? Yes, I am a black girl. But did you know I am a gymnast, soccer player, softball player, and bilingual? Yo puedo leer, escribir y hablar en español. But all you see is the color of my skin. Wow, you're lost. Martin Luther King's dream was for all his children to live in one nation where they wouldn't be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I too have this dream. I know you see the color of my skin, but before you judge me, try to learn my character. I dream and believe that one day, I will, my people will, my family will be treated fairly. Working with your family in these difficult times can help you stay together and be fun. Before the school shut down, we all did something where we hung out with our friends and it was really fun. But when the schools did shut down, we stayed at our house doing nothing. But we wanted to do something. So we decided to come up with a project of planting. Yes, together it was really fun, but before we started planting the seeds, my dad had to get the watering system ready and also the land. So when that was done, we all took a tiny break for like a day or two, and then we started the actual planting. We planted the corn, the watermelon, and the pumpkin. We have a big pumpkin right over there. And it has gotten really, really big. And it has given us hope that we would have our own food. So every day we come outside and check on the corn, see if it's ready. And if it is ready, we like getting it out of the crop and eating it. This is how my family and I stayed hopeful during this coronavirus. Como medidas de precaución ante este problema de salud que enfrentamos a nivel mundial, se informa que a partir de hoy se suspenden las clases en todos los niveles, lo que significa que todas las niñas y niños deben quedarse en casa hasta nuevo aviso.
se anuncia una nueva medida de precaución ante la crisis sanitaria. Desde ayer y hasta nuevo aviso, no se permitirá ninguna actividad recreativa al aire libre, por lo que quedarán cerrados parques, plazas o visitas al zoológico. El día de hoy se determinó suspender las actividades recreativas en las playas de todo el país, por lo que durante estas semanas todas las familias deberán pasar sus vacaciones dentro de casa. Y la noticia de hoy es que los hospitales no se dan abasto para poder enfrentar esta crisis. El personal es insuficiente y en los últimos días han tenido que doblar o incluso triplicar turnos. Y en otras noticias, esta semana quedan cerrados cines, teatros y museos en todo el país. Les informamos que el día de hoy, el país entero se prepara para aplazar la cuarentena unas semanas más, o de ser necesario, hasta nuevo aviso. Y estas son las últimas noticias que han surgido en toda la casa. En la sala se abre nueva exposición de pintura de artistas famosos. En el cuarto donde duermo se inaugurará un cine familiar en donde encontrarás tus películas favoritas. Habrá palomitas gratis. En el patio se abre oficialmente el mini zoológico en donde podrás convivir con dinosaurios. Y por último... En el comedor se inaugurará el mini restaurante familiar donde encontrarás tu comida favorita. Sometimes we get bad news. Sometimes it can get tough. Sometimes it can feel like the world is crumbling around us, like a piece of paper falling apart in a bucket of water. But when it all seems to be falling apart, our brains adapt and rewire themselves to help us get through it. They call this neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change and adapt to help us get through these tough times. And when the future is uncertain, my brain has found a new way to cope. When the world seems broken, I try my best to turn it into flowers. I cut up dismal headlines with my paper cutter. The blade slices through story after story about injustice, infection, and indoor quarantines. But I'm determined to find some beauty in the madness. I read bits and pieces about our changing world and dream of better days as I cut them into pieces. Now I have squares of newspaper. Each one is a piece of history that's happening before our eyes. And I set out to read each one and to circle the words that matter. Words that remind us that it's going to turn out fine in the end. Words of optimism among the gloom of 2020 news. Next is the folding. I crease the papers carefully and fold them into flower petals. The newspaper is thin and easily folded. I fold five petals, then prepare to assemble the flower. After I fold comes the gluing. I've been burned by the hot glue gun far too many times. But the burns I've gotten are no match for the smiles on people's faces as you give them something handmade. I can't give people flowers in person anymore, but I know someday I will. For now I can mail them. I snip off a stem and choose a button for the center. Most of my buttons were given to me by family friends who didn't want or need them anymore. And I use an old newspaper for the flowers, usually one I rescue from being recycled. Lots of art can be made with unwanted things. And at last I finished my flower. I used to sell my flowers at craft sales to benefit my favorite charities, and even though I can't do that anymore, there's no one to stop me from making them, to help myself cope with the news of today, waiting for the day I can give these flowers to my family and friends. This form of optimistic upcycling has become one of my new fascinations. 
Dreary news headlines can be made into flowers with just some hot glue, markers, wire, and buttons. Whether we notice it or not, flowers are ever-present. They appear at the most pivotal moments of our lives. They can symbolize love, respect, joy, or admiration. If someone gets married, there are sure to be flowers. In the back garden of a family, you might find flowers. Even at a funeral, there are flowers. This time in our life is a turning point, just like any wedding, funeral, or gathering. And when nothing seems normal anymore, I wanted to mark this era, this time in our lives, as something normal. When our brains were forced to adapt, mine told me to mark the occasion the way we always have. This occasion called for flowers. Mi nombre es Rodolfo Molina y hace 24 años que llegué aquí, a los Estados Unidos. Hace 24 años que dejé mi pueblo y les dije adiós a mis padres. Al llegar a los Estados Unidos tenía la esperanza de construir una vida mejor, una vida mejor. Una frase usada demasiadamente, pero es la verdad. Tenía la esperanza de tener mi propia casa. Tenía la esperanza de crear a mis hijos. De tener una familia. ¿Tuve miedo? Sí. Tenía miedo de lo desconocido. El futuro. Y lo que estaba por venir. Pero con mi meta. En mente. Y mi fe en Dios. Supe que me iba a guiar. A los pasos del éxito. Y aunque me caí y cometí unos errores, rendirme 
nunca era una de mis soluciones. 24 años después, he logrado lo que he soñado. Tengo mi casa, mi esposa, mis hijos, mi familia. Pero más que nada, pude comprobar que los sueños se hacen realidad. Y he podido disfrutar de los momentos más bonitos junto a las personas que más amo. La vida no es fácil, tienes que luchar por tu sueño. Todo que tienes que hacer un sacrificio. Cuando eres joven no lo entiendes, pero nadie, nadie te da cosas de gratis. Todo cuesta, todo cuesta, todo, uh -huh. todo cuesta. Hasta, hasta el que una persona te dé un saludo cuesta. Y no cuesta dinero, sino cuesta que te tienen afecto, un respeto. Y todo en esta vida se gana. Todo. Okay, Valerie, don't forget language arts test when we get back. Mr. Rango's math test you need to study for. Okay, Mom, what's the update on the coronavirus? Sometimes, me and my family go around our neighborhood in our golf cart, and sometimes in our bikes. Things at first were alright, but then I got news my grandma and grandpa had COVID. went downhill from there. I swear when I'm ready I will 